You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Smash After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424. 424- 256 1729. That's 424 256 1729. And now, another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Smash After Show. Good evening, everybody. Bing is for doing, and we are here doing the finale of Smash. It's so exciting. Season 1, Episode 15, Bombshell. I am Tamara Berg. I'm joined in studio by Kristen Carroll. Hey, guys. Kendra Cabasel. Hello. And Sarah Mendoza. Hi, everybody. We have Ronnie Jr. in the booth. Hi, everybody. And (laughs) if you can tell, we are finale ready. If anybody's watching us on video, we have, um, we've got a little costume action going, we got a little makeup (laughs) action going, we got some prop action going, and we have some craft services action going. We do. It's pretty exciting. And I I am going to stand up to show off my dress because all you can see is like my shoulders and she's very she, Marilyn-esque very tonight. She gorgeous. Is Marilyn. We just need a fan right <laughs> now. I know. Ronnie, do you have a fan that you can bring up here? <laughs> I have of course I'm working on it. <laughs> and I'm wearing my fancy shoes. Her sparkly Ooh. shoes. <laughs> okay. Gorgeous. All right, enough about me. So <laughs> no, let's do some more. Oh, more uh, about you. Have, you, you ha- no way. Our fantastic craft oh, services yes. is courtesy of Miss Tamara have, Bird. Um the AKA Marilyn. What did I call them again? <laughs> Platinum blonde, 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 blonde brownies. brownies. Platinum br- blonde brownies. I made them up and I can't even say it myself. <laughs> and then I did bring martinis. We're just not drinking them um, because you never know when Eileen might need to come walk in and right. throw a drink in somebody's face. Right. We don't want to stain anybody's outfits no. today. No. Or get no. electrocuted. No, because that would be really bad. Right. <laughs> well, those are tempting sitting right there. <laughs> the blonde brownies. They're not in they're the reach right, right now. Yeah, yeah I know. I I'll could guard make them. them. I could make them come over here, though, if you want to. <laughs> Oh, and they will be coming over on this side They'll be empty after tonight. break. <laughs> <laughs> to what, Ronnie? To, 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 I, I'm getting direction, and I just, I'm not exactly clear. Okay, <laughs> let's just get right into that the was, show. That was Marissa's hand, so I'll have to check. Uh, <laughs> Julia, Tom, Frank, and Michael. Let's just talk about the, oh my gosh. Okay, so Julia and Tom have... Are, are clearly opening the show by trying to write the last song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're yeah. running was, past the audience. Yeah. Get out of the that way. That was a great Crazy. intro, though. It was. It was a yeah. fabulous opening to the show, yes. wasn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It really it set like the tone. the hallways. That well, was it was nice. the first cliffhanger of the night because we were ready to, you know, see who's Marilyn. And then <laughs> we have to rewind 12, <laughs> 12, 12 hours, hours earlier. earlier. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but nice. it was it was it was so exciting and I just felt right from the start that the stakes were very high mm-hmm. and that is the kind of thing we've been looking for all season uh, am I right yeah. Yes. yeah we had it yeah. in the first episode we had it starting to build a little as the show went on it floundered yeah. and then they brought it back it and now we're all excited and yeah. we, it, it was a great episode yes. right yes. it was yeah really we applauded great. it was high anxiety for me I don't know about you guys but the whole time I was just anxious in my seat like all these things were happening. Yeah, it was a frenetic pace. The stakes were really high. Mm -hmm. And I I wrote um, in my notes that I loved the frenetic pace and that that everybody was just charged, just just charged with what's going on. And even that opening, uh, I guess it's the second scene where they're on stage and they're all yelling at each other and the camera's, you know, circling around them as they're arguing. Yes. That just really set the tone for me. Yes. It was cool. I really like that too. It's funny you brought that up because I wrote that down. Yeah. I, was like, I love the spinning camera. I it know. wasn't, an, you know, it didn't make you dizzy, but it just brought you into that <laughs> chaos yeah. that was going sort on. Sort of made everyone. you feel like you were part of it. Yeah. yeah. Right. 
and we're I part like, of that chaotic conversation. I loved Julia at the beginning of this too, because it brought in Deborah Messing's comedic side that yeah. you don't get to see necessarily yes. as much. I felt like I was watching Will and Grace again. <laughs> oh, yeah, I agree. Like when Karen had to go make the phone call, I need to call my I need to call my fiance. Yeah. And Derek <laughs> goes, you know, I need her, and Julia says, she needs to make a phone call. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. That just cracked me up. Right. It yeah, was, was so good. much better than when she's slipping on the slippery couch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We don't like the slippery couch no, very much. No, we don't. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> but also the interaction between Tom and Julia, where they're they're working to write the song, and she's going, "I got it, I got it." He mm -hmm. hands it to him. He says, "Yeah, not so much." Yeah, she goes, she's yeah. Like, this yeah, song sucks. Exactly. <laughs> she throws it so out. again, the good. the comedy part yeah. was was really fun. The timing was really well. It, it it was great. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had we had um, Frank come in here at one point. Right? At yeah. the wrong moment. Well, of course, you know, my my wife left me, Michael. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. I skipped over that part for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you repressed it. That just, I, I didn't want to address it. Well, it. Yeah. Yeah. And took yeah. the baby oh, and everything. Yeah. 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 That was just like well, a weird insert for me. But what did they expect? What? Sorry. <laughs> Do you, the two of them? Yeah. All The whole situation. I, I, I don't know what he expected otherwise. Well, he... He has never faltered from his, I want to, I want to be with you. Yeah, but you know? it, it was always a situation hidden from his family. Right. And he was, you know, it was almost like he was home free because they were oblivious to everything. So now that they know everything, did he expect them to just be fine? okay with it? Yeah. No, I, I mean, I don't know, but I, I would imagine he sort of doesn't care because he's, yeah. Yeah. you know, he, he, he was using that to try to get back in, I think. Possibly, right. possibly. Yeah. Right. Sure. I think he was using yeah. it. He was saying like, so, Julia. Feel sorry for me. <laughs> I'm single, I'm sort single, of now. right. Keep, keep rubbing my arm. And I did this for you. <laughs> was, you know, I came exactly. back for you, this and that, you know. Yeah. I wonder if just he, he was in theater too much. He was waiting for her to like burst in song and I love you too. Yeah. I'm leaving my husband. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I owe you a song. <laughs> Frank, yeah, but Frank, Frank and him should have had a, a song battle, like a um, <laughs> yeah. like the confrontation song, yeah. from Les Mis. If you guys know, right, that. right, there you go. <laughs> I wish there was a poster of Les Mis in the background. Oh, in the Did back. you guys notice? That? No, I in didn't. The conversation Portia. in the hallway. Can I just say though that I love <laughs> the like bombshell my... poster? <laughs> it's a poster. Da yeah, when they you? had it in the background. Yeah, I, th I think it's it was really cool. The way that they did it, silhouette, sort of, but you can see the cool. shape of the woman. Mm -hmm. It was cool. Which is how they've been showing us all season, because <laughs> yeah. we never would know who Marilyn was going to be <laughs> until right. that was just a few minutes ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, one of the things that I wanted to point out was when Michael and Julia were on stage, and he was bearing his soul, and she was rubbing his arm. The, it was it was a very it was a relatively public moment, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and so I felt like she was. She, you know, she was okay in what she was doing. It was, it, I don't think that there was any, it, any expectation of privacy for her. Mm -hmm. And so when she, when Frank left, I was kind of going, how can you, how can you see that as being something that's untoward and, and back, you know, backstage or back room? Mm -hmm. And when she got out front, he, he, he cleared it up and said, right. no, I didn't think it was anything right. that was, inappropriate but mm -hmm. and I think that was well written too because that was that mm -hmm. was plausible I know the whole time you're like this is impossible right <laughs> for different situations mm -hmm. but that one was realistic yes you know he saw it and it didn't mean he thought something was going on but he knew that they had something and that bonds is you know it's still there and it's the difficult for him yeah. the the word that I wrote down at that moment was tenuous that there that uh, Julia and Frank's relationship mm -hmm. is sort of tenuous mm -hmm. at this point or at that point yeah but then fish and chips comes along and everything's okay, right? <laughs> yeah, that was a little... I know. Well, I, I got scared just because of all the melodrama that does happen in this series. Yes. Like, I got scared, you know, in maybe my jealous mind, you know, knowing that my wife had relations with this man mm -hmm. not too long ago. Mm -hmm. If she's touching his arm, you know, like maybe something is, you know... Mm -hmm blossoming again right so but, i got scared in that moment i was like no <laughs> frank is saying this now it's gonna go all the hell and back to the melodrama right so, but but it, but go ahead kendra no i just was gonna say i think at the same time he just he knows his wife so he probably thought oh she's just a caring person so you know all of those thoughts are all kind of 
mixed up in his mind. Well, and mm. one would hope he would know that, but yeah. right. Well, it's just going mean, to be hard to see Michael in any any situation yeah. near each other, and especially her touching him. Yeah. I could <laughs> see where he's. And he kind of like, says that maybe, too. Maybe I, sh- I can't it's, watch this. It's still <laughs> early, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's, still it's early. a little sensitive. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Hasn't healed yet. Indeed. Now, th- but the thing is, is that when that that moment that she had with Frank out in front of the theater after the Michael and Julia moment was the thing that led her ultimately to sort of writing the song that that got, I mean it it, it, it well. It gave her the moment of things are good and the good outweighs mm-hmm. the bad, and mm-hmm. and that was what Frank gave her, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, d- did that show up in the lyrics of the final song to anybody else? It was about sort of that there are good things yeah, and, good, and yeah. these are the things good to remember bad, about yeah. me. Yeah, and yeah, that may be the star. <laughs> Don't forget me. Yeah, right? there was a little hint in there. Yeah, there it was. It was, it was I guess. Envelope. I thought that was even the name, like the name of the song. It's something. The, the song was called "Don't Forget Me." Oh, okay, never mind. So <laughs> maybe so. I just gave I her that. Good, up. good effort. Though. I made that. It, up. It may, it may you made the connection have, in your head. <laughs> my fantasy it may world. just have given her clarity to write. I, to I think that's what it was. You know, set her back into. Okay, let me just do this. Right, getting back on track because she's getting yeah. back on track with her marriage. She's mm-hmm. getting track back yeah. on track with the yeah. song, and hopefully, getting back on track with. Tom and their careers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. if it was though, like a literal, like, oh, now I have the name of the song. It would have been like her moment when she <laughs> bomb, bombshell when she thought of bombshell as the musical name. Yes. Oh, and he's like an <laughs> actual light bulb going yeah. off. <laughs> yes. <back. Ding. laughs> Side note: I was reading something. I was reading an article today, and and it was a really critical article. Um, but one of the things that the writer said was, I can't believe that somebody wrote a Broadway show, even within a TV show, that has the word bomb in the title. What were they thinking? <laughs> it didn't even occur to me until yeah, I read that. I didn't think about that either, because you're thinking of bomb show. They were thinking yeah. like, that's the bomb, like in a good way. Like yeah, bomb. but no. <laughs> you don't say that's the bomb that's about so a Broadway bomb. show. <laughs> That deserved an oh. Oh. I was trying to make all right, my joke's not Julia worthy right now. <laughs> Before we go any further, I want to thank all of our viewers and listeners for the ratings and comments that they've given us on iTunes. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's been fantastic. I was actually reading them today and was was so pleased that people are listening in and and saying really constructive and positive things about mm-hmm. about what we're doing and we really appreciate it so please continue because we do read them we do listen to your feedback and it really helps us out when you rate us and make comments so thank you for that all of our listeners thank okay you guys. let's move on to Eileen let's talk about Eileen <laughs> Eileen who was not on board with Karen being named no. from from the very beginning was um, not on board with Karen being named Marilyn mm-hmm Mm-mm. So and and she never wavered from that. Right. <laughs> really, I mean, she was just pretty much the whole time. She's more about practicality, I think, and yes. sh- she's thinking Ivy knows two thirds of the musical already, so it would make more sense to just train her for the last third instead of teaching the whole thing to Karen. Mm-hmm. Although if I'm Eileen and Ellis comes up and tells me Ivy should be it, I'm go, oh no, I'm sorry, Karen's going to be it. Right. Just, it would make me the opposite. the opposite. Yeah. Well, thank think... God for her firing him. Yay! Finally. I know. Highlight of the show for me. <laughs> yeah. Tara, you, you actually like, celebrated in the, when we were did. watching I did. I had to pause the recording for just a second and have a little, <laughs> do a little dance. <laughs> Woo, she she yep. did her little, little shimmy. cheer. I am a little concerned, though, that Ellis might come back next season. Oh, he will. I mean, oh, he, he even said to, he's but... like, this isn't the last of you've heard of me. Right. I don't care. I still want him to go to Cleveland. Like, maybe really he'll do. be in Cleveland. Dinner theater in that. Cleveland. That's what yeah. I want him to be working on. Dinner theater in Cleveland. <laughs> Producing I don't think it could be much worse for someone. <laughs> but, yeah. So he, he actually basically attempted to murder Re- Rebecca. Right. And with the peanuts. kind of just laughed it off. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody like, called call the authorities or yeah. anything. Right. 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 Yeah. A thing Is happened there going with to that. be no telephone call, follow-up, no some consequences for this? Yeah. <laughs> he said, this is a producer's work. I am a producer because of this. Yeah. Or because a murderer. Attempt, yeah. <laughs> attempted murder there. That was ridiculous. I, it, was just, it was just so great that, <laughs> that, he, that he got fired. It just made me so happy. <laughs> happy, happy. It'd be better if he was arrested at the end of the show. 
Right. <laughs> and sent to where? Cleveland. Cleveland. Thank you. <laughs> Jerry arrives to talk to Eileen. Jerry, her, her, her ex-husband. How much course. money she invested. Mm -hmm. Her very smug ex-husband, or soon-to-be ex-husband, which is, it, it's an honor of her that we have our martinis here yes. on the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, he, you know, the thing is, is that he's kind of charming, isn't he? A little bit. He tries yeah. to be, yeah. Yeah. I could see why they got along, you know? Yeah. he's mm -hmm. He knows his stuff. He knows his business. Mm -hmm. He was k kind of kidding and cajoling her, mm -hmm. and... And I'm sure it was just really pissing her off. <laughs> but I think he thinks that's flirting, and she's just like, get away from me. Because right. I have a hot boyfriend. Yes, yeah. yeah, she does. Who makes $5 martinis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that she doesn't want to throw on him. No, right. <laughs> I was hoping, I was thinking she was going to throw whatever she was drinking. The, yeah, yeah. I was like waiting for it, like, okay, here it comes. Because she wasn't making yeah. that big of sips. There was still a little bit in there. Liquid like, in the glass? Yeah. yeah. Throw it in. Or she pretended to throw out and be like, oh, shoot, I drank all of this. <laughs> that oh, would have been, been funny. funny. Yeah. yeah, I thought there'd be oh, a, that a, a good one, joke. Kristen. I thought there'd be a, a, like a finale <laughs> martini throw. What happened? I don't know. I, I think they maybe used them all up in the beginning of the show. Uh, yeah. it, got, it got a little cliche. I'm glad okay. they didn't, but that would have been funny. Kristen. That Exactly. Yeah. That would have been a great callback that wasn't <laughs> Sort of making fun ridiculous. of the fact that, yeah, we know we do this too much. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Next season. Maybe more suits for him. That's the problem. Yeah. They're like, this one's on rental, guys. We can't get it wet. <laughs> <laughs> so also, uh, Lyle shows up. Nick Jonas yes. makes a little cameo in tonight's yeah. episode. Nice to see him again, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Always nice yeah. to see him. Yes. <laughs> and he's giving back her, was it a Renoir? A painting? The painting? Yes. A Renoir, Renoir. I think it was. Uh, giving it back. And, and there was just a, a sort of nice little moment in there. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Thoughts? I thought it was really sweet. Yeah, that he brought it back. I mean, he didn't have to do that, and it seems like people in the show occasionally are very cynical and just like take whatever they can. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice that this you know big star in in this set in this show yeah. came back and gave that to her right when she kind of needed it. Mm -hmm. most. Yeah. She had her little venting moment with him, mm -hmm. which she needed. Yeah. And and yeah, I thought it Since was her boyfriend didn't show up. Yeah. No, he was there. He was in the seat. He was in oh, the was audience. He oh, he wasn't oh, yeah, there. Next like. To I didn't see him. He was next to no, her. No, he was in, in the, the audience uh, during just, the show. Yeah. I mean, okay. he, I don't know. We don't know where he was earlier. But he's definitely sitting next to her because he gave her one of those, you've got a hit on your hands yeah. looks yeah. in the mm -hmm. audience, right? That is, nice. is that how you interpreted yeah. that? Oh, yeah. yeah. He was proud of her. Is yeah. He, he wasn't watching the show like how Dev was in the back. No, no, no. Right. He was in the production. Yeah, yeah, he was in the production, yeah. the proper audience when that was happening. But I, And I thought that was cute. It was nice to see him again. Uh, let's also talk about Derek because that's that's sort of interwoven with uh, uh, Eileen. Mm -hmm. uh, her really being against Gar Karen being in the lead, him being very adamant that she be the lead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He yeah, just sees was... it. He envisions it. He yeah. sees her as Mary. And that was the thing he finally admitted to in the end, which I thought was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but he says to Ivy as she's crestfallen, heartbroken, you know, sobbing on the floor practically, he says, I see her. Mm -hmm. And she has something that you don't have. Mm -hmm. That's That was the killer. Yeah. That was yeah. the knife to the gut. Yeah. yeah. Which she's used to hearing from her mom, or she was used to hearing from her mom growing up. That you just don't have she's it? She's not good enough. You know, the abuse yeah. that she kind of, mm -hmm. which we saw at the end, she was looking at a pill bottle. And I won't fast forward to. No, you can. Oh, okay. that's fine. We're we're okay. kind of all over the place because it's a finale. Yeah, <laughs> I there's mean, we so can, much going. Yeah, on. we are going to be talking about Ivy a little a little yeah. bit more. But yeah. but, you know, Derek went. They showed it in the, the previously mm -hmm. ons. You know, you said you loved me, and then he talked about, two. I think it was two weeks ago when he said. I slept with Rebecca just because she needed me. Mm -hmm. He he's so all over the place. <laughs> she and needed then my the, attention. And yeah. then right, she needed my attention. Uh, and then in this episode, he again he's starting to grow a heart. Right. Is he, he knows about love. Yeah, that all was of a sudden. that I love me though. though. <laughs> he's my favorite. No, I sort of but, like Derek too in a weird way. But no, but he so when he said that when he was like, and I do know what. Love, I know about love. love. Is, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. What did he say? You're a star, and I do understand. Yeah, whatever love. happens next, understand you're a star, is and I do understand love. Is he confessing love, yeah. or is he just? 
Making May her think he's confessing love. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he's saying he understood love and he got his heart broken. That's why he's a I jerk now. I think he's <laughs> saying he loves Karen, but I don't think he knows what that I is. I don't think so either. He has I he think has he loves Marilyn Monroe. Anything that's a star. Or stars. Star, yeah. yeah. Whoever is in that leading role at the moment, he's had something with or fantasized something. Or he something. loves Broadway. Well, because he, he, you know, he's a powerful guy. He's a... a, a he, he moves in powerful circles. He can make people successes or failures. Mm -hmm. uh, narcissistic. We've talked about that many times. Mm -hmm. You know, need to have powerful people around that that they can both uh, take energy from as well as steal energy from. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean mm -hmm. by that. Mm -hmm. You know, so feeding off of them in, in positive ways, but also feeding it on them in negative ways. Yeah, like so, a leech. Right. Yeah. I think Karen's a good fit for him for that because she is so nice and he's able to mold her, but she still has his personality that he's not used to. He's so used to big egos. And she doesn't have one. Mm -hmm. Well, also, he can't he it, can't really conquer her the way he's conquered everybody else mm -hmm. because she obviously has a lot of respect for herself. Yep. And she's not going to just bend to his will. When she or... spurned him already, and mm -hmm. the you know early on when he mm -hmm. brings her over to his place and right. he tells yeah. her and to you know, strip down, she and she, and says, she says no. no. Right. So he's got that respect <laughs> for her that he doesn't have for well others. respect or sees her as as an unattainable. Thank you, right. an unattainable always, challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, have. wise Kendra. <laughs> <laughs> Is it my? Well, I won't. Say. <laughs> My level headedness. Yes, your 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 wisdom and level headedness because oh, yeah. the rest of us and what they mean by that is me are just uh, flighty and silly. Stop. <laughs> no. no, I work my flighty silliness. I do. She works it. Cheers to that. <laughs> but yeah, something uh, uh, she's a challenge yeah. to him. Yeah. And it was just interesting that they brought those kind of flashbacks back, you know, when he saw her in the dress he was going through the dresses on the rack. Yes. And he's like, Marilyn, Ivy? No. Karen, and then he, you know, kind of glowed after that. So it was just interesting to see his thought process and Team Karen winning. Right, and it was time. for me. For me, I was kind of getting that it was just very visceral for him. He was he was not thinking yeah. about what the decision was. He wasn't he wasn't doing what Eileen is, which is you know what's the business mm -hmm. decision, mm -hmm. what's the you know what's the smart thing to do. He mm -hmm. was just being emotional. very emotional and visceral about it, and that's that speaks to his statement about her having something that Ivy doesn't have. Mm -hmm. It's that you know they talk about it all the time mm -hmm. in showbiz that unattainable. I mean, undefinable, it quoi. factor, je ne sais quoi, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. X factor. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and yeah, I guess they were trying to kind of illustrate that to the audience so we could see what he was feeling. Yeah, and I liked how they did it. I yeah. thought that was a really interesting portrayal. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Karen. Well, he always goes back to the innocent <laughs> Karen, too. I think he's attracted to the innocence. You're right. Because he doesn't have, I don't think he has any too much innocence left. Mm -hmm. So he's really attracted to Clearly every time. Not. It goes back to Karen. It's like her in the more modest outfit, the early Marilyn. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's the one he uh, fell in mm -hmm. love with. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Because he understands the Right, because he understands that. Sorry. I thought it was, <laughs> there's a little sarcasm there in your uh, voice for that. <laughs> no harm, no foul. The, I, want to, I want to move on to the exciting thing that Kendra and I did on Saturday, oh my which was we had an opportunity to interview Leslie Odom Jr. So jealous. Me who plays too. Sam Strickland. Who plays Sam Strickland. And we had just the best time. We came in really early on Saturday morning <laughs> and, and got to interview him because he was in New York getting ready for a matinee yes. of Leap of Faith. And so we have some parts of this interview that we want to play. The entire interview is available on iTunes commercial free, and it's about 22 minutes, I yes. think it is yes. um, but we're going to play you a couple of clips of them and first thing I want to say is that when we started the interview with him he called in mm -hmm. and Kendra and I are in the studio we're all set up ready to go and I said hey Leslie it's Tamara from After Buzz and he goes hey and I go I'm here with and Kendra goes hey and then he oh, yeah. all we hear <laughs> is this screeching uh, girl in the background going oh my I god you. I love you <laughs> I love you I love this show I love it was like show, the best 
time in. Guys, I it was, was actually so- in New York. That was me. It was you. <laughs> yeah. It no. was so cute because he's yeah. going, I'm, I'm really sorry, you guys. I'm really sorry. Oh, thanks. Yeah. He was so adorable. Oh. And it was like about 30 seconds to a minute mm-hmm. of cuteness. And he's, and he comes back on the phone. He goes, I'm really sorry. And this is very new to me. This doesn't always happen. Aww. But but it, it it's very new. And it's and it sometimes happens when when I'm, you know, walking on the street. And yeah, it, it wasn't was it beautiful. It that really moment. was. It, it really was. couldn't have timed it any better for us to kind of experience that with him. Well, he's such a talented individual. Yeah. He is. And he's clearly very recognizable to people mm-hmm. now because of Smash. But he it was adorable. Kendra and I were both tearing up because yes. it was so cute and so Aww. sweet. And unfortunately, that part got cut off of our interview because we wanted to talk about it. We, we talked about it a little bit on the air, but it, it got cut off. Yeah. So, so... Uh, Ronnie, if we can, let's play the first. We'll just play the first and the second clips, one right after the other. If Can you do that? Uh, we have a clip prepared. So okay. We'll okay, this is the one where he's talking about the audition process and his connection to Megan Hilty. So here's Leslie Odom Jr. who plays Sam on Smash. Any second now. <laughs> It was um, actually one of the easiest audition processes I've had. Really? And I'll tell you why. It's because I lived, I've lived in L.A. for a decade, and Smash shoots in New York. They were casting out of New York, so I got to make a tape, which isn't always the best you know, way to audition. You, you do want to be in the room with the people if you can be. You, know, sure. you want them to experience you live. Yes. But, but there's also a plus in making a tape because you can do it as many times as you want. You can get it perfect. You know, you can light it. The, you, you control your environment when you put it on tape. So I made, it, I made a tape. I've known Do Bernard Telsey, the casting director, since I was 16 years old, and I went to an open call for Rent in Philadelphia, and he cast me in that show when I was 17 years old. And, you know, he's cast me a bunch of times since then. Like, I, I've known Megan for over 10 years. We went to college together. I knew Neil and Craig, our, our executive producers from L.A. So there were a lot of people involved in the process, involved in the show that I've known for a very long time. I still had to work for it. I mean, they actually, they got my tape initially and they made me make another tape. They wanted me to pull some more comedy out of it. Teresa was like, he's great, you know, but we had to, can he be funnier? So I had to make another tape and sort of, you know, be funnier. But, um, and, and a funny thing is I auditioned for a different role. So when they called and, and told me that I got Sam, that's not the part that I auditioned for, but I was happy to, really? you know, I think it was really exciting. Yeah. That's some good scoop. Now, did you know that Megan was involved in Smash when you were making your first audition tape? You did. Of course. Oh, yeah. Well, we, you know, Megan and I are, you know, really close. So when she's in L.A., we, we got together. We last pilot season, we both did pilots. She did Smash, and I did a show called uh, Poe for ABC. And so me her and my fiancé, after, after um, we shot them, we both went out for drinks and sort of, you know, toasted to celebrate and, you know, hope yours gets picked up, hope yours gets picked up, and... Hers went, mine didn't, which was a bummer. But you know, we ended up on set together, which is just the craziest turn of events. And Isn't so that exciting. crazy? Yeah. That's so great. Yeah, actually, I'd like to get uh, deeper into the character of Sam. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about it. Um, he has so many layers. Uh, you know, he's a black man in America. He's a gay man in America. Right. He's in an interracial relationship in America. Um, all things that still today in 2012 um, present sort of audacious headlines and stereotypes. Um, you play him so seamlessly and so beautifully. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that, you know, when you're creating a fictitious world, because, you know, that, that's what we are doing. I mean, it's fiction that, we're, that, that they're, we're creating on Smash. You get to create the world how you want to see it how you wish it was. And so while, you know, I can tell you that, you know, I know guys like Sam, you know, very well. And, you know, these my closest, these are my closest friends and loved ones and stuff. So, but it isn't a world that, that America, I think, has seen in this way before. And um, I think that that's the, that's the power that you have when you're creating a TV show, when you're creating art, you know, yeah. you can create things as you dream it and then it allows the audience to new dream and maybe to, you know oh yeah why isn't it like that mm-hmm. why why didn't why don't i accept my son for who he is why don't why don't i 
accept my brother for who he is, you know? And so I think that that's a great opportunity that we have, you know, we don't, we don't have to tell it necessarily like it is, right? <laughs> you know, in art, we can take a leap. A leap of faith. <laughs> and I think it's much like the passion behind Ivy and Karen in Smash. Um, from, right. from the character Sam's perspective, and I mean, you can be diplomatic if you'd like to be. <laughs> um, who do you think he's really rooting for to get the part of Marilyn? Well, good question. <laughs> I, um, I think that it's no secret that he's team Ivy. Okay. You know, I think that um, in, in Sam's mind, you know, Ivy has paid her dues. That is, that is his bestie. Yeah. He has seen her. You know, he's, he, that's a talented chick. And he's seen her fight. You know, he's seen the, you know, he's seen her get ignored. And he has seen her fight for a decade. He thinks it's her time. You know, I, I, think, I think it's very clear. And, you know, and that's nothing against Karen. And, you know, I think that Sam hopes she gets her moment. Mm-hmm. someday, but I think he would be disappointed. Well, I know uh, you also have some philanthropy uh, going on, and uh, you support yeah. the Uganda Project. If you could just tell us a little bit about that. Uh, the Uganda Project is not, excuse me, it's not the Uganda Project. It is just Uganda Project, Uganda UP. Project. Up. Um, but uh, it was started by my best friend from Carnegie Mellon, uh, he was in my class, and when we were 20 years old, he took a missions trip to Uganda uh, for six weeks, and he comes back, you know, having had an experience, and uh, he started a nonprofit. When we were 23 years old, that hey, you, um, primary education is not free in Uganda, so if you want to go to the third grade, you have to pay for it. If you want to go to the sixth mm-hmm. grade, you have to pay for it, and, you know, there are obviously so many, you know, orphans and, and kids who, who can't afford that, and so Griffin doing his small part to change the world. He took on about 10 or 11 kids, and he just raises money. And it's not a lot of money either. You know, it's, I don't you know, five, $600 a year to, to get an education. So he set about, you know, uh, raising the money for these kids. And he's been doing it, um, you know, like I said, for about, I don't know, eight years now. And I've just seen them grow and um achieve goals and put kids through school. I mean, he set a goal and he is achieving it. So that's where, like I said, my money and my time and my talent goes to when I have it. And um, I hope people will do their research on Uganda Project. And where can people find out more information about Uganda Project? Uh, UgandaProject.com. Again, Mm -hmm. simplicity is the answer there. Rather, it's not easy to self Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and the the last Whoa. thing that we want to give you is Leslie's Twitter handle. It's Leslie Odom Jr. L e s l i e o d o m j r on Twitter. So do listen to the full interview on iTunes. It was so fun to do. And Kendra and I feel like we're good friends with him now. <laughs> <laughs> and then we saw him on screen today. We're like, that's our friend. <laughs> that's our friend. He's our friend. He's he's a lovely, sweet, generous. Very, very talented guy. Mm-hmm. He and sounds great. He really is. He really he's is. Smart. We were very lucky. Thank you, Kendra, for getting him yes, in the first thank place. Thank and you, Leslie. We were very lucky. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, yeah. Kendra. Yeah, it was so great. <laughs> Ronnie, did you want to talk a little bit about uh, Amazon while we're at this point here in life? Uh, that, that is true. Or we're getting Would you a, please? Well, we were doing about 17 things with that interview. But yes. I know. Uh, Sorry. Uh, yeah, a no, lot going we're, on we're, here. We're, 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 a lot, yes. Uh, AfterBestTV.com, of course, if you're going to do your online shopping, we definitely appreciate that you do it through us. Uh, what that means is Amazon is the way you would do it before, but now do it through AfterBuzzTV.com. There is a banner on the top right side. It's next to the banner that says Maria Menounos on Dancing with the Stars, so you could clearly vote for her as well right there. But go to the banner, Amazon. That uh, ensures that the great studio that you're looking at, all the beautiful hosts that you have right there on the on the table, uh, that everyone looks good, sounds good, the whole deal. So go get your Amazon on. So help us out with that. Okay, so now we really need to talk about Ivy and Karen. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, so one of the I think I yelled the most at Ivy this one. I, I apologize. Why? For talk. My, tell us why. There why? Was why? A lot of whore calling. Yeah. <laughs> it was you and I. Though. I was like, no, she's a whore. Get away. Get away. <laughs> you were so she can't do it. She's it. a whore. <laughs> I was, I was just mad. Thing, I was it's mad. So I was being catty. 
No. Well, I felt like she was kind of returning to her roots, to where mm. she started off the series, because she was definitely she was she was very professional, always had a smile on her face, and say the right things mm. in in the early episodes, really, especially mm-hmm. in the pilot. But she would be like doing little digs around the backside, doing deals, yeah. and I felt like she kind of was getting back to that this time, only in a really really big way. Yeah. Well, this time it was in the front side. She yeah, was doing the deals on the front. And yeah. it was even worse because it got even more personal than just, you, you can understand yeah. almost I'm going to screw you over because I want to be the star, but it's like, hey, look what I found. This is your mm-hmm. fiance's ring. He was in my room she doing is. stuff. Yeah, that, it's yeah. just this complete disregard for other people's feelings. She's mm-hmm. very selfish and self-centered. Right. Well, not only is she messing up with Karen's head, it's the production on top of it. I mean, it put it into even more turmoil. Mm-hmm. But it ended up right. working out. Yeah. Well, well, it was her plot to, yeah. to get okay, that yeah. blonde right. wig on. Yeah. She, That's you know, right. She wanted to step into the Marilyn role, and she was scheming, how can I do this? How can I ruin Karen so that she would be out of the picture? Yeah, she's not mm-hmm. allergic to peanut butter. What can I do? <laughs> right, and it, right. Ba- and it backfired on her. Yeah. because. But And that was one of the things that I thought was interesting. So when, when things started to fall apart, Karen runs off. She disappears. She leaves breadcrumbs, like Derek said, you know, <laughs> to, into the wardrobe room of little, little bits of Marilyn on the way. He finds her in, I think it was the wardrobe, or I think so. Yeah, yeah. The the, and yeah, in her, in her that's, bloomers. Of course, that he was following, like, ooh, who's naked? Right. You know what? She could be wearing a dress, and he'd probably still see her in her undies. Right. You know? <laughs> a snowsuit. He sees and everything he in so. his undies. <laughs> just to calm suit. his nerves all the time. He just pictures everyone in their underwear. Yeah, yeah. or just her. <laughs> But she's so they're in the dressing room or, or wardrobe, and she says, "I can't do it. My whole life is completely dot dot dot." You know, yeah. she doesn't she doesn't finish that. And again, earlier in episodes, um, Ivy was talking about she was having all the challenges with getting sick and taking the drugs, and she ended up using that those experiences and channeling them into her performance with Marilyn mm-hmm. and Karen had not done it to this point, mm-hmm. right? And and was not doing it right. mm-hmm. here in this point. And, and Derek was the one who pointed out to her, well, now you have a heartbreak. Mm-hmm. And like any good director says, use your pain. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. Use your pain, channel it into, into your art. Which is interesting because she's done such a good job up until that point. I guess that's what would set her over to being that star. Right. That's that's sort of where I was going yeah. was and that's 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 obviously what he was trying to get mm-hmm. out of her. Mm-hmm. One of the things he was trying to get out. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> it's very good point. I'm so glad that it, on it didn't go there though. He's mad so though. No. Oh, oh so sorry, no. I'll stop. <laughs> Where's the sound effects? Don't stop. Well, Ronnie's busy back there. He's got he's got a lot going on. He's got a lot going on. I mean, I'm the sound effect tonight. But anyways, <laughs> you were saying. Well, do you think that <laughs> do you, you you were saying? No, she was, do you, I don't I think she, I was. I saying. Oh. No, you weren't actually. No. She was trying to pawn it off on you. Is really what happened right there. Do you think that it worked for Karen? Oh, I, you could see it yeah, in her yeah. eyes. Yeah. It motivated her, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. And I, she was great. As soon as she took the stage, I was like, she's going to show him. Mm-hmm. This is going to fuel her, and she's going to knock it out of the park. And she and did. And she did. It was I, very different than, you know, all the times Ivy had performed those songs. Both both very good, but different and in in their character. Right. So it was cool to see the how how Karen would the play. The contrast. Yeah, the contrast. How Karen would play Marilyn mm-hmm. tonight. And mm-hmm. I still had, I liked her voice changed a little bit too. It was more Marilyn than I think we've heard her. Mm-hmm. Well, now, and at that point where they were doing the number where the voice was changing, they they were doing the flashbacks of Ivy and having, there were all, some of them were flashbacks and some of them were just new footage or footage that maybe I didn't remember. But it almost sounded like the they actually melded in the voice of Ivy. Was it just me or or did that seem I like over Karen? That. Yes. I think um, it was just Karen doing just more Karen. of an impersonation of yeah. Marilyn okay. and they just end up kind of sounding the same. Because Rebecca did the yeah. same thing at certain points. Yeah. I mean, at, yeah. at, at points, not mm-hmm. the whole thing, obviously, because she's... <laughs> It was it was nice to actually feel something in the suicide scene because when Rebecca yes. Duvall was doing it, mm-hmm. obviously yeah. that was comedy, right? Because right? she's 
horrible. She was playing a horrible actress. Exactly. Mm-hmm. For, for stage, at least. Yes. Yeah. So then in, in that scene, when Karen was doing it, it was actually very good. And I felt something in that. Did you guys feel that? It was that really too? touching, mm-hmm. I thought. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It well, was the fact that she did the reprise of, you know, Baby Grand. Mm-hmm. And Ugh, I think that added song. a little bit more to it because she could carry the notes and she wasn't just speaking it. And then, right. yeah, Rebecca just kind of <laughs> fell off. Inside, but I thought she was going to fall off when she did it. But when when that Karen did it, it was more believable. Right. Yeah. And uh, absolutely well, it was. What the heck was <laughs> What is this? That is not an appropriate we didn't sound even effect for us. Yeah, Tammy was, I mean, uh, Kendra was asking for sound effects. Oh, uh, yeah, no, not for that, that one. What an awkward <laughs> moment, though. We're talking about her committing suicide. Thanks okay. for, thanks for Hirsch and her mellow there, Ronnie. Moment. That was a, it did. Oh, it did. Funny. But, okay. Uh, he lightened things up a little. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Okay, <laughs> I lo- okay. Let's talk about just the whole production. So, and and we oh, can, let's talk man. about the production and talk about the songs because the so the what was it? I, was it the wolf song? I oh. never met a wolf I d- who didn't love to oh. howl. Oh. So Great good. number, oh, was wasn't yeah. it? It's yeah. fun. Yeah. I wanted to dance. It was in good that. the first yeah. time. I, know. I like that they did it differently because if they did it the same as when Ivy did it, then it might have not have been as good. But it yes. was different this time mm-hmm. and Karen she's so talented I have such a crush on her now <laughs> <laughs> on Karen? Yeah, yes so, on your Karen so Miss Team Ivy <laughs> how do you feel about Karen yeah. being Marilyn? I oh <laughs> I'm howling like okay. If we got it. We got it. it. Sometimes I don't know if I'm funny. Or we not. got it. So. <laughs> um, that was fine. No, that was she good. she did a really good job, mm-hmm. and they I think they meant for her to do a really good job. Sure, of course. Sure. So of there, course there she's was a talented. Small moment where Ivy was Marilyn before Karen came back. How did you feel then? When oh. when she dressed up in the red dress. Honestly, I'm already at the point where I'm just so disappointed in her character. Like, I'm I'm uh, on your same ship where I'm like, she doesn't deserve it. Like, Ivy does not deserve this, even though, yeah, she might have it in the bag or whatever. Mm. Just the things that she did on the personal level, no way. Mm-hmm. Like, I wouldn't want her at this point to be Marilyn. Yes, I switched teams, Kendra. You know, it was strange. I did. <laughs> well, I mean, okay. I knew it would happen. It's no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's, she's always been whispering in my ear, and I always happen to sit right next to her, and she's yeah. always like, yeah. <laughs> Team Karen. <laughs> Excuse me, Team Karen. But no, um, no, what were we saying before that? She's just so fixated on her win. No, just no, kidding. No. No. Tra- we're talking uh, about the number? The production. The, oh, uh, yeah. The, the, oh, whole, the overall with, production. The finale with, yeah. really got me. The it was a great addition. The last song you yeah, made. Yeah, or sorry. Yeah, the... Don't forget me. The ending of the musical okay. I thought it was very Broadway so that excited oh, yeah. me I love going me to Broadway too. shows and I was like this is this is an ending number for it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea mm-hmm. I wouldn't think and the lyrics oh, were just amazing yeah, too. I was getting too. goosebumps when Karen was performing that last you know because it, it it was a culmination of the whole season and yes you know she got her moment and mm-hmm. just that last pose with her arms in the air the victory yeah. It really was just like <laughs> a, team Karen, a yeah. great yeah. testament, though, to how iconic Marilyn is with the lyrics, how it was saying, Remem- don't forget me, you know, remember me when you sing happy birthday, yeah. mm-hmm. remember yeah. me when, you know, this and that. And they were talking about all these amazing moments from Marilyn's life. Mm-hmm. So I just thought the lyrics were really cool. It was cool I, how her arms framed her face at yes. the end, mm-hmm. too. Oh. I really like that. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. The the, cool. the direction and all of the, the production design and the the cinematography of this episode I thought was really fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We talked about that tracking shot, mm-hmm. the, the the one later when Tom and Julia were walking through the mm-hmm. yeah. through the th- through that gorgeous mm-hmm. theater. I want to find out what theater that I'm is. I'm sure a fan will be able yeah, to tell us. Yeah, somebody mm-hmm. tweet us or message us. Tell yes. us if you know which theater that is. Yeah, it was so beautiful. Um, but I have to say, I just really quickly have to say that the lyrics did not work for me in the in the final song. Isn't oh, that interesting? Man. I thought the music was amazing, and I liked that they that they brought in the happy birthday and diamonds and things like that. But it it just it seemed. Well, it was rushed it as was, it was, right? No, 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 no. Actually, oh, no. Okay. It seemed a little cliche. But the argument could be made that Marilyn is a bit of a cliche. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So, um, but it, but it felt it felt immature. The lyrics felt immature to me, mm-hmm. and um, and I'm not a lyricist, and I can't you know I can't I don't can't play that game, and maybe I shouldn't <laughs> even be criticizing. But but really, just what I want to say is that it didn't connect for me on a on a lyrical level because I felt and maybe it is because it was an immature song maybe mm-hmm. that's maybe they were trying for that mm-hmm. um but i wanted it to be everything that you guys experienced in it and i didn't get that Did the you, music i thought was fantastic you think though. it was immature symbolically because of, of karen's kind of birth into this role well i mean it would be nice if that was the intention yeah. but for me i i just left feeling like well that was kind of a silly song you know, oh, those were kind of silly lyrics. That was how it made me feel. So if that was no, and I'm sorry, <laughs> we're, we're like, oh, it. it's our song. I think I was just caught up. I'm sorry, and I li- I liked the concept of it. I really it. did. I just there, it just seemed. I, I've already said it. I don't need yeah. to say it. I don't need I to repeat it. But I got the chills from or goosebumps from the presentation. I wasn't necessarily and, and I, I loved usually that. pay attention to lyrics, but I wasn't. I was so caught up, like you guys said, in yeah. I think just all of the stage going on. You know, yeah, going and on. and I thought and all of that really worked for for me. But it was just the lyrics felt felt. I've said it too many times on this show. <laughs> felt a little how, silly. How did the lyrics? But no, I, I was going to say, I've said it all season, you know, things, it no, felt a little silly yeah. to me. I and like, I'm sorry about that because I, like I really wanted it to be the package of the performance, I guess. And, and, I, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. And I'm really glad that you guys all enjoyed it because that was what they were going for. <laughs> it just didn't connect for me. And, and that's okay. Well, that's I think okay. this, the yeah. song itself was very specific just to Maryland. So it's not a universal song. So sometimes you get that in, mm. in musicals or any kind of movie where there is a song where it's just for that. And maybe that's mm. the connection. What makes a good song is, is everybody can kind of feel that but we don't have you know when somebody sings happy birthday they're not going to think of you know a regular person they're going to think of Marilyn Monroe so you can't relate to the lyrics that way yeah perhaps that's my my only thing with that but I liked it I'm glad you liked it (laughs) I'm glad you liked it I I thought I I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> um, I think we need to take, because we're running a little bit long, and we do have a little bit of news and gossip to go over. So let's uh, scoot over to our commercial, and then we'll come back and do some news and gossip. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. John Comerford here. I've got my Mad Men with me. Kevin Undegaro. Phil Svitek. For all you fans of Mad Men, we're your AfterBuzz TV hosts of Mad Men. Every Sunday, right after the show, 9.30, we're breaking down the episode. You can also check us out on iTunes and YouTube the following morning. We're going to get into the imagery, the symbolism, the structure. We give you all the information on Mad Men that the other podcasts out there don't. Very insightful. You're going to love it. Check us out. Please. (laughs) Hello, everybody. We are the LA Complex crew, and we are here with Andre Fuller from the LA Complex, who plays Caldrick King. And you can catch LA Complex every Tuesday night on The CW at 9 o'clock. After that... Come to our After Buzz TV show where we do a recap of the LA Complex. We talk about Raquel, we talk about sex tapes, we talk about, you know, relationships. And you can catch us live at 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, AfterBuzzTV.com. If you can't catch us live, go ahead and swing over to YouTube the next day. You can rate, you can comment, watch us, iTunes, same thing, download, rate, comment. And we would love to hear your feedback and we love to support guys. So please, please, please support us and support the LA Complex. Buzz you later. Hey guys, this is the After Buzz TV crew for The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Woo! Don't forget to tune in every Monday night at 8 p.m. to see Adrian Vero, Deanna Vaughn, Susan Hahn, Giselle Ugardi. Buzz, buzz you later! After Buzz TV. What do you want to buzz about? Breaking news. Tamara's brownies are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they are really good. <laughs> Thank you. I've had too many already today, so I can't have any tonight. I'm going to, but I won't do them. Yeah, we oh. also had we also had New York cheesecake tonight, oh, I inhaled that. which was yes. Thank you, fabulous. Kristen. I will be eating it for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so let's get into a little news and gossip. Uh, this is this is sort of news. It's more. Real, real, real oh, quick. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, no, we'll just do the gamefly. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know what this is. So oh go ahead. well, I'll tell you. Will you uh, tell us? Tell I will do my Tommy. best to tell you. Just uh, as far as the podcast uh, fans and listeners or whatever, uh, gamefly obviously is in hand in hand with that. Uh, there is a free 15-day trial, GameFly.com slash AfterBuzzTV. Uh, by doing that, you're you know exposing yourself to the 8,000 games that are on PlayStation, Xbox, 
Wii, all that good stuff. So basically, if you're wondering even what Gamefly is, but you are a video gamer, kind of breaking it down, it's the the Netflix for video games. So think Netflix, video wow. games, ties it all together. And it's a cool little thing that AfterBuzz is doing for you. Go to Gamefly.com slash TV, and you're kind of hooked up with all that. So awesome. Real simple oh, 8, and easy. 8,000 games? Wow. Wow, I got to hook that up to my PS3. Super <laughs> Mario. <laughs> Sorry. That's cool. awesome. Okay, quick news. We had a listener write in with After some... <laughs> we had a listener write in with some terrific trivia. We were talking about Angelica Houston's song, September Song. And um, and we, I do remember we talked about that we didn't... I specifically had said I was hoping she wasn't going to speak the entire song, and she ended up not doing it. We all liked it. We all enjoyed the song. But this listener... Steve wrote in and told us that the song was actually written for her, Angelica Houston's grandfather, Walter Houston, in the 1938 Broadway musical Knickerbocker Holiday. And it's been recorded many times since then. But I just thought that was a lovely, sentimental, sweet bit of trivia that we yeah. got about that song. Yeah. Thank you, listener. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the inside. You info. have some ratings news for us? Yeah, I have last week's ratings. Of course, we won't get to see tonight, so everyone can look those up uh, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But last week's uh, episode had 5.7 million viewers, which is, I think it's lower than it has been mm -hmm. over the season, but it's still a good, solid number. And they're coming back for another season, mm -hmm. so this doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. It doesn't right. matter at all. <laughs> And then one little bit of snarky news that, that I read, and that is Mother's Day was yesterday. Yes. Uh, Deborah Messing's character, Julia, was rated number six worst mom on TV. <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, of course, that has nothing to do with Deborah Messing right. and, and oh, no, her, her, her status as a, as a parent, if she is. Well, I assume she is. Who yes? was, do you have who Yahoo. one through five? No, I didn't. I oh, didn't because okay. I just thought it was... I just thought it was funny, and I didn't want to give it too much credence. No, because, I know. You know, because it's well, not very nice to say. But but they were saying that her son Leo looks like he's forty years old. He's still living at home and smoking pot, and she doesn't do anything about it. Instead of giving him tough love, she babies him. She's having an affair, and her son sees her giving having an affair. Wow. And if you're going to initiate that, don't do it in a place where your son can watch her. She's staying in a miserable marriage. Basically, they were they, just really critical. They went her. really into the psychological and, yeah. and analysis. Clearly, probably not fans of Smash is right. what it sounded. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I, I just thought it was very funny. The top ten worst mothers on TV. She was number <laughs> wow. six. That's interesting. So that is our news and gossip for this week. We, do, can we just give a little prediction? What yeah. do we think is going to happen now? Oh I have to gosh. say. And now you're <laughs> in a second. TV. <laughs> Prediction. Sam, J Leslie Odom Jr. scared the living daylights out of us on the weekend because he said there are many cliffhangers and he, he says in the interview, which you'll listen to on iTunes, yeah. people, he says that he's a little concerned about Sam and Tom's relationship. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get any of that tonight. It I seems know. everything oh, is, is, yeah. is moving, sailing very smoothly. Yeah. Maybe that's why he's scared about it. <laughs> because there was there's no drama. Cute. There's no drama in Sweetness and Light. Mm -hmm. Could be, yeah. could be. Yeah, because the last time that happened, Deb and Karen. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah, what do we think is going to happen there with Deb, Deb and, and Karen. Karen? I think eventually I they'll mean, reconcile, my prediction. He's going to go after her. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's he was watching himself. her from the back, and he was just like, I love her. But yeah. then Derek's off the side, like, I love her. But I think love should have <laughs> brought him home that night. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> think he's going to try. Love that made him stray. <laughs> that night, right. It was the alcohol. Sorry. I think he's going to try, but I do not think they will reconcile. Mm. I think it's over for the two of them. I, I think they know. will they will have a rocky road to a nasty, hideous breakup. And that's she'll get my together prediction. With Derek. <laughs> they, you know, it might be Derek. I, because her whole life is about to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's and she said my whole life is falling apart. Well, actually, her whole life could it's potentially just, beginning. just beginning. Be right. beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she's going to be exposed to all kinds of people and all kinds of experiences that she's not had before. And I don't think Dev is going to fit into that. But Derek mm -hmm. will. 
<laughs> sure. Sure. Well, well, this Rose. girl, she I loves Derek. Know. Any other quick predictions for next season? It's probably not going to be until a mid-season I don't replacement. Think so I think Ivy does like, anything with the pills. Let me just, just we have that. like nine months. We, have, we, we all could have babies someone before the show I was comes back. Say, someone could have a child. No. Oh. No, <laughs> it's not going to. No. <laughs> well, you know, theoretically. Maybe a food baby. <laughs> yeah. Let's start now. Let's oh, get the just real quick, speaking of that, uh, Julia throwing up the last time I had this. Oh, I was right. Right? That's going to be something. She could have a baby. By Michael Swift. A Swift baby. Swift baby. Swift baby. <laughs> you know and it's a Swift we baby. we saw that in her expression when Frank oh. went to hold her hand and connect with the, oh, oh. look at what, you know. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to get Frank in bed really fast and just be like, it's yours. Frank. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, oh, that, look, and that could creamy. be That could be the twist. Maybe it is Frank's, you know. Twist. Maybe that. A no. swift twist. Gosh, swift twist. I don't even know. <laughs> uh, ladies, give me your Twitter handle, please. Oh, the fan to see. Kendra? <laughs> Kendra Cavasell. Should I spell it? No, I think they know how okay. to spell it now. <laughs> Miss Sarah? Sarah Mendoza. Sarah with an H. Ronnie is at Ronnie Junior Media, and I am at Tamara Berg. Also, my website is TamaraCentral.com. Well, this is you. it. What are we going to do on our Monday nights? Besides be asleep by this point. I oh, know. Yeah. Okay. He gets the sound of that. <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie. Well, it's I'm been, trying. Well, it's been a really interesting season on Smash. I can't yeah. wait to see what next season is like. Just just to let listeners know, I am probably going to be doing the Glee Project for After Buzz as the yeah. next show. Does anybody else have another show lined up? I'm do you know what you're currently, you're currently doing America. America's Best Dance Crew. Check us out on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. And check all of our Twitter feeds to find out where you can yeah. find, find us. Cause, next. Yeah. Cause we find us on Facebook. There. Thanks for being yeah. with us, fans. Thank Thanks thank you, for being Smash with fans. us for Thank Smash. You. We're going to miss you. We will see you next <laughs> season for season two of Smash. Mid-season. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.